Hello ladies and gentlemen of YouTube, my name is Brad, this is my channel Animate Orange where I build a lot of 3D metal models and show you how I do it and today on the table thanks to Patreon support the oil tanker offshore oil rig and oil tanker box set and thank you again for Patreon support and to my first Patreon supporter Alfie Boy1973 for making this model possible I've been looking forward to building something rather larger here lately this is a basically two kits put into one and we've already built the oil tanker so today we're gonna put together the rig let's open this up take a peek inside and put that together offshore oil rig and oil tanker box set what's inside wiggle 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 come on open up I know you wanna come on there we go ta da we have Sheets. We have more sheets. Looks like maybe this is a pack for the tanker and this is a pack for the ore rig. And what's underneath? Instructions. One, two, three pages. So basically, what we have here is two separate builds or two separate models boxed up in the same gift box and they have something to do with each other they're both oil related in this video we're going to focus on and build the tanker portion which is the two sheets here so we'll move this to the side grab the first sheet and open this up to the first page so starting out with page one you've got your usual fascinations and metal earth logo little line drawing of the completed model and one of the sheets the QR code for the 360 view and the web address so you can go see the 360 view if it's up which I don't believe this one is yet and then we have one of the parts as a sample with notations about the insertion holes insertion tabs and fold lines fold lines is where you fold stuff insertion tabs you insert in insertion holes to connect things together legends or the legend which has all the little symbols you'll see throughout the build you see an E pointing at something it's pointing at the usually engraved side or engraved section of a part any e points at a non engraved side trying to tell you which side faces which way this is an attention point it can mean a variety of things but it's basically trying to call your attention to something in particular where usually it's the way something aligns it may be some other detail and it may have notes along with it blue circle when you see that at a connection point indicating to insert a tab and fold it over 90 degrees green triangle insert a tab and twist it 90 degrees there's one right here and here's some attention points right here which are pointing at these tabs so it would seem that when you build this part these tabs need to be oriented in that particular way for it to come together and then down here you've got the two metal sheets so I'll just grab one back out of the plastic here as a sample looks like I've grabbed this one it has all the parts listed and all the numbers pointing at all the parts and you'll notice that a lot of things are shaded in and colored like these purple pieces here let's see one of these purple pieces is probably numbered no matter of figuring out which one Ooh. Here we go, number eight. All of these purple pieces are number eight. They're all the same thing. They number it once, they color in the rest, makes it easy to find, easy to tell them apart, and less numbers and less crowd along the edges. I like that they do that. And if we move over to page two, as usual, the start of the assembly flow chart. And for the most part, you just follow the numbers and arrows, starting with part one. Bring that over here. We've got part two times three. Add that on. Come down here as part three. Shape it in this little sort of sub assembly and add that on. Part four. Add that on. Come over here. We've got part five. Curls around. Add zone. Part six. Shape that. Add it on. And just continue on following the arrows, the numbers, the sub assemblies. Putting this together. At the bottom, move on to page three, much of the same, and then on to four. Once you're done with four, we have another sheet. 
open up the other piece of paper to the inside. Page five, follow that through. Page six, get to the back for page seven, page eight, and then once you get to the bottom, you're all done with your model. Let's take a moment to talk about the tools that I use. This is my standard set that I use in most every build. I have long needle nose pliers and flat nose pliers useful for a variety of different things. I have flush clippers that I use to cut the parts off the trees. It makes it quick and easy. And then I have some precision tweezers, one with a very pointed end, one that's had the pointed end ground down slightly, and one with a flat sort of curved end great for getting into curved areas. And then I have a standard set of tweezers with an angled tip. These come in one of the Iconics models and I love them and use them a lot. When it comes to shaping rounded parts, there are many options. I used dowel rods for a long time. I sharpened the ends of two of them with a pencil sharpener. These two are great for making cone shapes. Another option is a cheap drill bit set. This set has quite a few different sizes to choose from. Another option is a set of step mandrels. Ring pliers or round nose pliers can be found with jewelry making tools and work wonderfully for curving delicate and or hard to get to areas. We've looked over the directions, we've got our sheets and some tools to get us started. Let's put this together. With part two, I follow the directions at first where it says to put the engraved side on the outside of the drum, but as I fold it over a side piece, I noticed an engraving on it that would have ended up hidden inside. I thought at first that there was a mistake in the directions and that the part was supposed to be shaped so that the shiny side of the drum was facing out and whatever was engraved on the end would face out. Also in the picture, many of the drums shown are shown with the shiny side out. Furthermore, at the time of this build, there is no 360 view available. I realized later that the engraving on the end was just the letter A and that later drum parts had similar letters B, C, and so on. Part two is supposed to be engraved side of the drum facing out as the directions say, but I made a mistake. Now having said all of that, I found part two to generally be tough to shape properly because of its small size and the location of the tabs. I used a couple of my smallest drill bits to shape part two.
be careful to put the pieces on the correct side. Some go on the engraved side and some do not. I rolled some of these cylinder shaped parts on the tabs to try and soften the joining edges. The edges where the two halves join tend to not want to curve as easily. Be sure to pay attention to how these three parts are oriented on the instructions. These tabs need to be in the correct spot for a large section to attach later.
I'm not going to show it in the video, but I missed parts 9 and 10, and incidentally attached part 8 directly to the platform, then realized I missed something and had to pull it back off. The lesson here, aside from pay attention to the directions, is also maybe working at 4am with tiny little metal parts because you can't sleep is not the best of ideas. The instructions indicate to twist these tabs, but I folded over instead. I didn't want twisted tabs getting in the way of the next connection. With these tabs, I had to bend them slightly just to be able to twist them, so I just bent them all the way over instead of trying to twist. This was another tricky section to assemble. I do not like it when only one tab holds on a part, but that is what I had to deal with here. I bent the tabs on part 12 up slightly to start the bend. I then attached parts 13 and bent the tabs over as securely as I could. 
I tried adding in part 11, but with just one twisted tab, it of course fell back out. I added on part 1 part 14 to secure the sides. Then secured part 11 to part 15 with a bent tab and carefully added it to the top. then secured the bottom tab of part 11. Part 11 in the end seemed a little long for the area it was in, but there really isn't anything to do at this point.
I had to slide part 27 in at an angle to get behind the cable. The twisted tabs can get in the way of bending these side pieces down. I found myself sometimes using the tabs to help pinch the side parts into place. I had trouble holding the crane and platform together, so I immediately bent down one tab with my fingernail. Bending the edges of this platform is made difficult with parts 28 in the way. I bent the side pieces partly down, then positioned one side of the jaw of the flat nose pliers behind part 28 and finished the bend trying not to damage part 28.
We've reached the end of part one, ladies and gentlemen, of this rather long video build. I've split it into two parts. At the end here in a second, you'll see a link to part two, also in the description down below when it becomes available. And as always, thank you for watching.